Today, of course, we celebrate the feast day of St. Ignatius, not the great Jesuit missionary and founder of, founder of the Jesuit order, the Order of Jesus, but an early martyr. In fact, uh, towards the almost the very beginning of the Christian era. And in the liturgy this evening, we read the interesting words of sacred scripture that unless the grain of wheat falling into the ground die, itself remaineth alone. And we apply those words, of course, to our Lord and I believe to the the fruitfulness of his passion that he had to die, to be crushed and ground into the gra- into the into the earth, in order for there to be the fruitfulness of his passion. But they're applied today to Saint Ignatius, a great martyr. Of course, the reason the the priest wears the red is to symbolize his blood. Do you know what they say of him? That when he was carried off to his execution, or rather when he was condemned to die, they say about him that there was never a criminal who rejoiced so much over being pardoned, let go, as St. Ignatius rejoiced when he was condemned to die for Christ. He rejoiced more than any criminal who was pardoned. Well, he was... He was carried off, and of course, when he was taken to the the amphitheater and condemned to be devoured by wild beasts, by the lions, they say that he did not pray to be spared. His only prayer was that the lions not do what they had done to so many other Christians, where the lions come and miraculously they, instead of devouring the martyrs, they crouch down at their, their feet and begin licking their feet and everything. St. Ignatius wanted no part of that. He wanted to be consumed for Christ. It was his only desire. And his only prayer was that the lions do indeed devour him. And they say when the lions came out, he heard the roaring of, of these wild beasts and his prayer was answered. Nothing was left of his sacred, of his body other than his bones, which the Christians quickly ran up to and picked up and took and kept as relics of someone who had just died for Christ. It's a beautiful story, actually. And in the gospel today, we read beautiful words. With Christ I am crucified, I am nailed to the cross. And so we should be every day of our life. We are meant to be a living sacrifice for our blessed Lord. Not to, we shouldn't sit here and wish to be spared suffering. We should like St. Ignatius of Antioch. Not necessarily pray for suffering either. We're not always good at bearing with the simple things that our Lord gives us. So we should, maybe we won't, have to pray for extra suffering, but at least pray for the grace to have the patience of the martyrs in all of our sufferings, to be nailed to the cross with our loving Savior. Because, as St. Paul says, our flesh, all of its concupiscences and vices, have to be crucified, put to death. And that's the purpose of the Christian the spiritual life. And St. Ignatius, what was it that gave him, that fired him up, so to speak, to desire to die a martyr's death? It was the fact that Christ had first loved him. The fact that our Lord had come down to earth from heaven and had suffered so much for him. As St. John says, Prior dilexi knows, he hath first loved us. God, think of it, from all eternity, has loved every one of us with all of our failings and our faults and our weaknesses. He loves us not just in spite of them, but because of them. And he was, he came down to heaven to save us from these faults and imperfections. He was nailed to the cross. 
he hath first loved us. Greater love than this no man has, that he give up his life for his friend. And so this thought, the crucifix, should be the thought that, that fires us up. And if we can't find ourselves getting all excited emotionally, can't always control emotions, and they don't matter really anyway. They're a means to an end, not the end in themselves. But we should look at our Savior crucified, and his sacred heart pierced by the lance of Longinus, and remember that he has first loved us, even to the death of the cross, and use that thought, the fact that he loves us, as a, as a means of producing the affection, the, the love of God in our own hearts, and the patience that we need to bear with all the little inconveniences and all the little crosses and sufferings of this life. And in that way, we can share in the great patience and the fortitude of the holy martyrs and be like that grain of wheat falling to the ground, dieth, and then it produces great fruit. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.